joining me for Storytime Online. Remember, the kids learn more if they have their grown-up with them watching. If you think you can go to do something else and just let them sit there, they're going to get more out of it. If you're sitting with them, explaining what they're seeing, pointing out stuff that they might not have noticed in our performance of the day, story time is together. Spend the time together viewing story time online. Thank you. I'm so glad that you are looking at us, even though we can't look at you. We are going to get started with our first song. We're using American Sign Language. Do you remember from the, uh, the last story times? We're going to use more and together, like you're stirring a big pot, and friends, hook your fingers like your, your friends, and your and mine. And happy, a big smile on your face, happy. Okay, let's get started. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends, my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Very good, very good. We're going to get started with our first book I've chosen. What about moose? I need to put my glasses on now. This is by Corey Rosen Schwartz and Rebecca Gomez. And I want to thank Athena Books for Young Readers, which is an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, for letting us read the book to you today. What about moose? Fox met her friends with her toolbox in hand. It's time to start building! Now, here's what I planned. She divvied out jobs and then Moose trotted in. See Moose it's over here? I'm here, he announced. Let the construction begin. Hmm. He put on a hard hat and said, let's get to it. I'll be the foreman. I know how to do it. Now, hold on, said Fox. Let's work as a team. We need to help your help with that heavy beam. But Moose made a sign that said, caution, work zone, and shouted commands from a big megaphone. Bear, crank the handles, tighten that brace. Toad, keep on the sanding, but pick up the pace. But what about you, Moose? Toad asked with concern. Hmm. I'm overseeing, said Moose, looking stern. He spotted and jotted down all imperfections. Imperfections, that's like all the things that are wrong. He was pointing out all the things that were wrong. But he was marching around, making careful inspections. Porcupine, watch it! You're poking small holes. He spouted and shouted all kinds of advice. Measure correctly. It must be precise. But what about you, Moose? Fox asked with a glare. You're chopping about, but you're not doing your share. Moose wiped his forehead. I'm working up a sweat. Being in charge is the toughest job yet. Hmm. Skunk nailed the crossbeams to make the floor strong. But Moose said, not that way, you're doing it wrong. The floor and the door should be just a bit straighter. Then Porcupine mumbled, who made him dictator? Hmm. Fox laid the floorboards as Toad manned the drill. Bear did the caulking with handyman skill. Moose clambered up as they nailed the planks tight. Time for the walls, he said. Don't take all night. Oh. What about you, Moose? You're in the way. Nonsense, said Moose. Just do as I say. Clunkety plunk, one wall was complete. Perfect, said Moose, but watch out for my feet. The walls went up as they hefted and pounded and built all around Moose until he was surrounded. Get ready, now steady. Now listen to me, lift up the floor Lift up the roof, <laughs> counting to three. 
But what about you, Moose? The friend said as one. Moose said, no questions. The work's almost done. Don't worry, just hurry and set it on top. They put it in place with a loud banging plop. You see what they mean? Put the roof on top. Look. And it was too late when Moose hollered, Stop! Hey, what about me? Moose's voice cried. You built all around me. Now I'm shut inside. I'll never squeeze out of this tiny front door. What are you all just standing around for? All the friends and all helped him are right there. Bear tried to pull using all of his might. It's hopeless, cried Moose. This doorway is too tight, but they're trying to pull him out of that little door. He groaned and he grumbled. It's squishing my butt. We'll help you, said Fox, if you keep your mouth shut. So, here's my idea. And they all huddled near. All the friends are working together, plotting and planning so Moose couldn't hear. With thumping and bumping, they worked around Moose, and they were ready to set their friend loose. See what they did. They built a slide. A push and a smush, and he popped back inside. Oh, wow, a trap door. He zipped down the slide that they cut out from the bottom. Then Fox State named a game that all the friends could play. And what about Moose? He played it their way. He learned to be a good friend. I like that story. Nobody likes people that are so bossy. They didn't like Moose telling them what to do. I want you to do a chant with me. A chant is something, it's not a song. Chant is just spoken word, rhythmic words to maybe song lyrics. It could be song or not. We're going to do it as a chant. Now I want you to pick a name of somebody around you. It could be a grown up, it could be um, a, a friend of yours, it could be your dog. You could come, say buddy, it could be your dog. We're going to use our hammers. We're going to pretend we are being construction workers. So we're going to use hammers. Yeah, get your arm ready, ready? Okay. I'm going to use the name Jenny. Jenny pounds with one hammer, one hammer, one hammer. Jenny pounds with one hammer. Then she pounds with two. Jenny pounds with two hammers, two hammers, two hammers. Jenny pounds with two hammers. Then she pounds with three. Does anybody have three hands? No. We're going to use our foot. That'll be our third. Jenny pounds with three hammers, three hammers, three hammers. Jenny pounds with three hammers, then she pounds with four. Have you got another foot? Okay. Hope you're sitting down. Jenny pounds with four hammers, four hammers, four hammers. Jenny pounds with four hammers, then she goes to sleep. That's silly, isn't it? And you could think of that, you could sing it again with somebody else's name, and you could say, they saw with a, with a saw, they drill a hole with a screwdriver. You can make it up any way you want. That could be something that could take a couple hours. No, not, not that long. That's so. I want to sh read another story to you. It is called Big Bad Wolves at School. School all looks very differently now, but this is a wolf school, so that's different than anything you're doing now either. This is by Stephen Krensky, illustrated by Brad Sneed. It is also published by Simon & Schuster, and we thank them for letting us read the story today. Rufus was a young wolf who spent his days turning over rocks, rolling in the grass, and running like the wind. At night, he liked to howl at the moon. Can you howl? Howl. 
Although Rufus seemed happy, his parents were worried. Rufus never, will never survive the cold, cruel world, said his father. His mother agreed. We have to step in before it's too late. Hmm, there is only one thing to do. They sent Rufus to the Big Bad Wolf Academy, the toughest school around. Straighten up there, barked the headmaster, addressing his new arrivals. You arrive here as ordinary, everyday wolves. But that will change. With hard work and dedication, you will leave as big, bad wolves. Most of the students were impressed, eh, but not Rufus. He's catching butterflies. The training began in gym class. There the wolves learned to huff and puff. In through the nose, shouted the instructor, and out through the mouth. Soon, some of the students could blow up a real storm. They're working over here, but not Rufus. He's blowing dandelions. In acting class, the wolves practice wearing disguises. Look, we've got in pajamas, in a bathrobe, curlers in her hair. That's so silly. Always pull your tail through first when they're told. That way, you won't get squished. So they have to put tail in first through their costume. Many of the wolves were quick learners, but not Rufus. Twice a week, the students met with a foreign language teacher. Say, bah, he snapped. Now show some feeling. Bah, the class recited, huddling together. But not Rufus. The truth was, Rufus missed his old life. Sometimes he asked the other wolves to go for a run or a swim, but nobody was interested. You're so old-fashioned, Rufus, they sniffed, picking, sticking your nose into everything. Look, he's got his nose in a tree. On restless nights, Rufus went outside to stretch his legs. He would run back and forth, howling at the moon. What pack is that? The other wolves always shouted out the windows. Keep it down. We're trying to sleep. After a few months, the students went on a field trip. See, they're walking through the field. And they did very well. All except Rufus. As the seasons passed, the other wolves kept on practicing. And Rufus felt more and more out of place. But they're all dressed up practicing and he's wearing sheep's clothing. They're practicing being in a bed. At the end of the year, everyone began preparing for final exams. They studied very hard. What's the difference between lurking and sneaking around? Which is easier to wear, a nightgown or pajamas? Is it better to enter a hen house through a door or a window? Rufus knew he should be studying too, but when the sun was shining and the air was clear, there were so many better things to do. He wanted to go swimming and chase the ducks. On the first day of testing, Rufus was completely unprepared. Suddenly, the alarm sounded. Hunter shouted the teacher, prepare to defend yourself. Some of the wolves rushed outside to huff and puff. But it did no good. The hunters held on tight until the wolves were exhausted. Others tried to escape in disguise. That didn't work either. Rufus was so scared, he let out a howl. Oh! The other wolves stopped to listen. Many of them had not howled in a long time, but they were just as scared as Rufus. One by one, they joined in. Oh! They're all howling. The hunters froze in their traps and covered their ears. When Rufus saw what was happening, he got an idea. Quickly, he told the other wolves his plan. Howling and running and running and howling, the wolves darted through the wood, woods. The hunters hesitated. There were far more wolves than they had anticipated. Oh, the wolves seemed to be everywhere. Run for your lives, the hunters cried, retreating to the village. 
The wolves thanked the wolves thanked Rufus for saving them. You made us all proud," said the headmaster, handing him a special medal at graduation. Afterwards, Rufus and his new friends put away their lessons and returned to the woods. They ran and wrestled and swam in the lakes. And once a year, though, they returned to the village just for fun. Look, they put their costumes on. Isn't that silly? I want you to think about when you are doing things like that with your friends. I mean, not howling, but you can howl too. But you're doing things with your friends. And sometimes you want to do things with your grown-ups too. Ask your grown-ups to join you. Sometimes grown-ups don't know how to join kids. Invite your friends and your grown-ups to take part in your play. Grown-ups use different words for playing than kids use. Have them pretend with you. Make parts. Pretending together and working together is something that um, will really inspire everything in you when you're learning things at home. And speaking of learning things at home, I want you to think about things that you might have in your kitchen to build with. I want you to think about things that are not breakable. So cross off glass jars. That, that would be too messy. I want you to think, I brought a bag. Now this came from my house. Here, all the way. I had a cans of soup. Soup was on sale at the store and I bought a lot of cans of soup. And actually, I know I had dog food in there too, so you might notice that the can is, is dog food too. I have big cans and little cans. And I want you to think about stacking cans. Do you know what a hypothesis is? A hypothesis is an educated guess. That's a very important word. Even grown-ups, even scientists have hypothesis about what they're doing. I want you to think, once you look at all the cans that you have gathered, and you might have blocks. If you have blocks, if you, oh, what other things can you stack? Whatever you have at your house, think, I think I can stack all 10 cans all the way up. I wonder if I can do it. Let's see what we do. Should we start with the little cans or the big cans? Which ones should we put on the bottom? I'm thinking that I should start with bigger cans at the bottom. But if you want to start with little cans, you can. If maybe you only have little cans. If you only have little cans, that could maybe work. But I think if we put big cans on top of the little cans, I don't think that that would work. I think we should start with the big ones. Okay, there's two. There's three. There's four. Okay, they kind of fit together well. Five. One. Let me check on that. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Six. Seven. Eight. Are you getting nervous? Nine. You think I can put the last one on? Ten. Actually, things are pretty steady. I could probably keep going, but that's all I brought with for this. So I did it. My hypothesis proved correct. I was happy. You can go to Calvert Library online on Facebook or YouTube and see all recorded story times that we've got already up. You can watch one, or if you have a whole hour, you can watch a couple, two or three of them. So it's a, it's a very fun thing that you can do at home since we can't go out. I want to ask you to say our goodbye song. You remember our goodbye song? We also use sign language for that. We're going to use goodbye 
and friends and time and say goodbye, okay? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. See you next time.